The following is an expression of mistrust and anger through a conversation that black America should have with white America. You don't know me, do you? As long as we've been living and working side by side, after all these years, you still don't know me. I built your plantations and your cities, and you still don't know me. I've taken care of your children, cooked for you, cleaned your house while mine lay in ruins, and you still don't know who I am. I nursed you back to health when you were sick. I left my own children home alone so that I could take care of your children, and you still don't know me. Maybe it's because you've been busy trying to make me what you wanted me to be or what you thought I was rather than seeing me for who I really am as the person that God made me. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Isaac White here, Jr., the senior pastor of First Baptist Church, Gainesville, Georgia. I'm also a candidate for president of the General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia in the year of 2020, and I certainly solicit and appreciate your prayers. You don't know me, and there's a mountain of evidence to prove it. When I say black lives matter and you say white lives matter, all lives matter, blue lives matter, that's proof positive that you don't know me. It's not surprising that you don't understand me because you don't know me. When you ask, why are you guys so angry all the time? That's evidence that you don't know me. It didn't start last night and it didn't happen overnight. This is anger that was instilled in us long before this generation touched down on planet Earth. It began with our ancestors, our forefathers, hundreds of years ago, and it has continued to this day. And it's more than about what you as white men and women are doing today. It's about what your fathers did and what your mothers did and what your brothers and sisters did hundreds of years ago. And you are continuing their legacy today. Although much more sophisticated, much more subtle, you're still at it. Now here we are hundreds of years later. And the anger has not subsided, but only worsened and grown intense, more intense by the day. And you're scratching your head trying to figure out why all the anger, why all the hostility. And the sad thing is you have some of us wondering the same thing. Yes, I'm angry. I'm one angry black man in America. You walk around with your head held high living footloose and fancy free, laughing and enjoying life. Well, I like laughing too. You seem to think your whiteness gives you some special privilege or rights that no one else enjoys but you. Do you think I like being angry all the time? Do you think I like what you've done to me, what you've made of me? I'm angry because you, I'm angry because you did it, and I'm angry because I allowed you to do it. I'm angry because I can't seem to break free of it. I don't like being angry all the time. I like laughing too. I want to live footloose and fancy free, not looking over my shoulder all the time, not worrying about my children when they are driving around town being stopped by a crooked cop for the crime of being black in America. I don't want to have to worry about my children or my siblings who may be out for an afternoon jog, not coming home. I don't want to have to, be, to worry about my wife, my sisters, or my daughters being abused by someone who can hate us so deeply and for so long and yet be so obsessed with our women. I like laughing too, but I don't want to have to worry about someone killing me because I'm looking at white women, even though they can't seem to keep their eyes off me. I'm angry because whatever you did to me is still working today. I don't know how, 
but whatever you did to contaminate my mind and poison my heart and alter my spirit is still working today. And occasionally it flares up. I lose control. And I do things that I sometimes I can't even tell you why I do them. Yes, I'm angry with you flaunting your race before us all the time, like Goliath before Israel. But remember, David, and while you're pushing and promoting the idea around the world that white is right and black get back, doggone right I'm angry. I'm angry because of why you brought us to America. I'm angry because of how you have treated us since we've been here. No, I don't like being called an animal or less than a human being. I don't like being sold on the town square to the highest bidder. It makes me angry when I think about how you tortured and humiliated and mutilated our strong brothers and fathers and how you molested and abused our mothers, our women and our young girls and our children. I don't like you for the liars you made of us, for the cheaters you made of us, for the murderers you made of us. I don't like it. I don't like because of the abusers you made of us. I'm angry because I find myself treating my own family and my own people the way you treated me. I don't like being angry all the time. I like laughing too. Yes, I have a problem with how you came to this country that was already occupied and how you lied about discovering it. I'm angry about the way you used violence and murder, deceit, exploitation, and thousands of broken promises to take this land. And then you have the audacity to talk about, we can't let them take our country. Let who? Are you crazy? Your country? Native Americans were already here when you got here. And your country? Most of us were here before those of you who are here now got here. And your country, much of this land was taken by hook and by crook. The Native Americans who were not chased from their own land or forced to flee or those who were not killed have been relegated to reservations where they are left to entertain us and show us how their war dancing, other traditional ways of life have become nothing more than tourist attractions and ceremonial activities designed to amuse us. How am I supposed to feel when you come up with the bright idea of establishing the American Colonization Society designed to put and keep niggers and engines in their place? And you even tried to send us to Liberia, but you finally figured out it would be more profitable to keep us here as long as you could control us and subjugate us. Many of us didn't make it to Liberia, but you were still successful at colonization. Only now in modern history, we call it segregation. While you maintain control and containment over the people and their life, you put us in separate schools, separate neighborhoods, separate restrooms, separate colleges and universities, separate movie theaters, separate areas on the bus, separate water fountains, separate vacation spots, and separate restaurants and hotels. Colonization, segregation. Our life and history has been lived in colonization. You fought hard to keep us in our place and deny us the right to determine our own future. You denied us the right to be educated and the right to vote. Yes, I'm angry. Even after emancipation and after the war between the states, we weren't treated any better. During the Reconstruction era, yes, we saw some temporary changes and some temporary gains, but you gave with one hand and took back with the other hand. And we're supposed to like that? You show a glimpse of improvement or success, and then you go back to plotting and planning how to bring us back, right back to where we were. I'm angry because of how you raped us, lynched us. I'm angry about what you stole from us, what you cheated us out of, 
and how you burn our churches and burn our schools and burn our homes. I'm angry about all the lives that were ruined and lost at your hands. I'm angry about how you killed and mutilated and hung our men from the highest tree, all in the presence of their wives and their children. And you thought nothing about it. As a matter of fact, you thought it was funny. You thought it was amusing. I'm being angry because of how Georgia duped and tricked the black people into adopting and accepting the national flag of the Confederate States of America as our state flag. For the political leaders in Georgia to trick us like that shows how sincere they were. Zero. It shows how much they can be trusted. Zero. We must be the laughing stock of America. Probably the only state in the nation proudly flying the national flag of the Confederate States of America. And yes, in the year 2020. I'm angry because I've been a good boy for you. I still look the other way when I see your women. I still cross the street when I see you coming. I still stay in my place. And I try not to make you uncomfortable. I've been a good boy for you. You gave me books, but I don't read them. You gave me jobs, but I don't keep them. You don't have to worry about that. You gave me opportunities, but I don't take advantage of them. All because I don't want to compete with you. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. You did such a good job in conditioning me that I love you more than I love my own people. I put you first. I give you the front seat. And whatever you drop, I pick it up for you, even though you're 21 years of age. And here I am, 86 years of age. It's not right the way you treat me. I've been good to you. When you and I were together, I acted like I don't know black people at all. I do my best to act white. I trust you more than I trust my own people. I respect you more than I respect my own people. And I patronize your businesses before I will theirs. And this is the thanks I get. I gave up my self-respect, my dignity, my manhood, so that you would like me. And what do you do? You treat me like I'm one of them. And I keep trying to show you I'm different. You taught me well. Remember the good old days when you no longer had to carry the whip because I carried it for you? And I was so proud when you let me carry the shotgun and handle the dogs. You remember that? Remember when you didn't have to cuss them niggas and abuse them because I did all that for you? You remember those days? Wow, man. We had some good times back then. And I haven't stopped. No, no. I never let you down. You can still count on me to cheat my people, to despise them, to beat my women, neglect and abandon my children. You can still count on me to abuse my people, to manipulate my people, to defraud them. You can still count on me even to kill my own people. And now you're acting like you don't know me. Come on, man. You turn me against my own people. You turn them against me. I could deal with all that. And I can forgive all that, but I can't keep dealing with one broken promise after another, one lie after another, one act of deception after another. And you're surprised that I'm angry? You've been standing on our neck for hundreds of years and you don't understand why I'm angry all the time? Regardless of the notion that we all look alike or that we are all alike, black people in America are the most diverse people in America in physical appearance, in thought, in attitude, and otherwise. And we are the most divided, fragmented people in America, thanks to you. You did this to me, and you ask me why I'm angry all the time. You still see me as an animal. You still think I'm less than you. And you're still trying to deny me my rights and privileges as a human being and as an American citizen. 
just like what was thought to be two vessels meeting on a foggy night, one seeing the light ahead and the captain of the, let's call it a naval vessel, sent a message to what he thought was another vessel. This is Captain, we'll call him White. This is Captain White. Change your course immediately. He waited a while, no response. He echoed it again. This is Captain White. I'm the biggest, baddest thing on earth. Change your course immediately. That's what life has been like for me throughout my history in America. You've been ordering me to change my course, and I obeyed. I turned my head when you told me to. Although Rosa Parks didn't move, I moved to the back of the bus when you told me to move. Listen, I crossed over to the other side when I saw you coming. I went to the back of the line. I went to the other door that said colored only. I mistreated and renounced any connection to the black race, and I disavowed any feelings or support for my own people so that you could be proud of me. I did my best not to inconvenience you or to make you angry in any way whatsoever at all. But this madness has gone on long enough. Don't tell me to change my course. I'm not who you think I am. I represent the lighthouse and I command you to change your course. It's time for you to change your ways, to adjust your life and your behaviors. You talk about violence. We resort to violence because violence does work for you. It works all too well. It makes you sit up and pay attention. It makes you move. It frightens you and rocks your world. It brings discomfort to your comfort zone. I don't like violence. I'll be the first to say that violence is not the best way. There is a better way, and that is through prayer and doing our part to see that the system works for all people. It's tragic that violence works, but it's even more tragic that it has to come to that, that it has to be put to the test. You don't respond to kindness in a kind way. Kindness doesn't move you. Only chaos moves you. Don't just criticize people for doing what they are doing. Criticize the system that made them this way, that brought it all down to this. I'm angry. Why do you think we burn our own neighborhoods and stores and destroy everything in sight? Because we're more than angry. We are mad as hell. We don't have anything to lose. It's you who has everything to lose. I understand the anger of the black man in America. And as far as I am concerned, the anger of the black man in America is justified. Now it's just a matter of how we channel that anger. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have been beaten physically, mentally, and emotionally, and scarred beyond recognition, and we cannot help ourselves. We need you to bring power, your power to bear, on our pain and on our situation. Forgive and heal those who have afflicted us and who in turn have afflicted themselves. Deliver our minds and free our spirit so that we can love again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being with us. Please continue to stay safe. And remember, I am angry, but we can work together and work through this anger and make our world a better place to live. God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer.